The Nativity is one of the twelve great feasts of the Church which commemorates the birth in the flesh of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. It is celebrated on December 25th, and churches retaining the old Julian calendar celebrate it on the January 7th according to the secular calendar, meaning, essentially, that Milos and I will celebrate Christmas then, but thank you all for the nice wishes we received until now. There are a lot of memes going around claiming that this day specifically and the circumstances of Christ's nativity in general are taken from pagan myths. These memes tend to be outright fabrications, generally never listing sources for their wild claims. I will just say that the specific date for Christmas, December 25th, wasn't chosen for its association with Saturnalia, but because it falls nine months after the Feast of the Annunciation when we celebrated the Incarnation of Christ. I highly suggest this video by Michael of Inspiring Philosophy, who does a terrific job at defending Christmas from these silly claims. He has an entire series devoted to the subject. The Nativity of Christ is preceded by 40 days of fasting, meaning we abstain from meat, dairy, fish and eggs, with fish being allowed on certain days. The Advent Fast is a symbolic representation of the sorrow of mankind at free reign of sin, but also a joyful anticipation of the birth of the Messiah who will shatter our bondage to sin and death once and for all. The second Sunday before the Nativity is called Sunday of the Forefathers, where all the holy ancestors of Christ are celebrated. The next Sunday, called the Sunday of Holy Fathers, likewise celebrates Christ's ancestors in the flesh, but also the saints of the Old Testament, especially the prophets who foretold the coming of the Messiah. This is the Gospel reading for the Sunday before the Nativity. I will give you a moment to reflect on this powerful passage. The day before Christmas, the Divine Liturgy of St. Basil the Great is celebrated, but also the service of the Royal Hours, during which the prophecies of Christ's Advent are read, as well as the Old Night Vigil. The Nativity Liturgy itself is the one of St. John Chrysostom. On Christmas Day, and 12 days after that, until Theophany, it is customary to greet one another with Christ is born and to respond with glorify him, or in Serbia with indeed he is born or truly he is born, depending on your personal preference. A number of important feasts after Nativity emphasize the solemnity of the main feast. Day after the Nativity is the Synaxis, or the Convocation of the Most Holy Theotokos, where the faithful gather to celebrate the role of the Mother of God in giving birth to Christ. The third day of Christmas is also St. Stephen's Day, while it is traditionally believed that he died on this day, his feast day also serves as a reminder that the joy of Christmas is always overshadowed by impending persecution and death, which are likewise overshadowed by the joy of resurrection. Speaking of persecution and death, on the fourth day of Christmas the Church celebrates the Holy Innocents, children who were cut down by Herod in order to ensure that the newly born king would not usurp his throne. The icon of the Nativity is full of symbols, so I will just go through them real quick. Note that depending on the size of the icon, some of these elements might not be present. In the center of the icon we see Christ in a manger. His swaddling clothes are intentionally similar to a winding sheet used to cover a dead body, and the manger is depicted as a miniature tomb. Likewise, the inside of the manger and the cave are colored black, indicating that, ultimately, Christ is born to die and arise. Next to Christ is his most holy mother Mary, meaning that he is truly human and born of a woman, he did not appear out of thin air. An ox and a donkey are close by Christ. This not only indicates that Christ was born in a cave that served as a stable, but the clean ox symbolizes the Jews, whereas the unclean donkey symbolizes the Gentiles. Christ is born for all humanity. Above the happy pair is the star of Bethlehem. Its rays point to the Son of God. However, these rays also symbolize the descent of God and his incarnation in the flesh, so, on occasion, a small image of the Holy Spirit is painted in the ray. At the top of the icon, you can see angels who glorify God in the highest and proclaim peace on earth and goodwill towards men. They often announce these tidings to shepherds, which is what I suppose this little trumpet guy is supposed to represent on this particular icon. Opposite to simple poor shepherds are rich and wise magi, who are following the star. Again, Christ is born for the poor and the rich. Generally, the Theotokos is seen looking towards St. Joseph, worried of his doubts as regards to Christ's birth. St. Joseph is usually seen conversing with a shepherd, who is actually a devil in disguise, amplifying his doubts. Finally, we can see Christ getting washed after his birth, again pointing to the fact that he had a true body and that it wasn't an illusion as some heretics had claimed. 
Petristics has a good video on the nativity icon. I suggest you check them out for more info. Of course, Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without an entire array of lovely customs. However, this will be the subject of another video. For now, we will end this video with a joyful greeting. Happy Holidays! If you'd like to help our channel out, consider donating to the crowdfunding platforms found in the description. Bye!